In the previous lecture, we discussed free particles and the waves that those particles produced, which are known as plane waves. Now let's look at the following example that deals with free particles and plane waves. So let's suppose a free particle, say an electron, is moving along the x-axis in the positive direction with a total energy of 10 electron volts. Now, if we make the assumption that the potential energy of our free particle is zero, in part A, we want to determine the wavelength of the plane wave produced by the free particle. And in part B, we want to determine the wave function that represents the plane wave that was produced by our free particle. We're going to assume that our constant B is equal to zero. So, let's begin with part A. So, in part A, we basically want to calculate the distance between any two consecutive crests of the plane wave that is produced by the free particle. And to do this, we're going to use equations 1 and equations 2 that we spoke about in the previous lecture. So, k, our constant, is either equal to 2 pi divided by lambda or it's equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar squared. So basically, to calculate what our lambda is, knowing the mass and our energy, we can take these two equations, set them equal to one another, so that the k will cancel out, and then we can solve for our lambda. So setting equations 1 equal to equation 2, we get the following result. Next, we rearrange and solve for our lambda, and the wavelength is equal to 2 pi divided by the square root of 2m multiplied by e divided by h bar squared. Now our energy is given in electron volts. So to use the energy, we have to convert the energy from electron volts to joules. And to do that, we have to multiply 10 by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules. Now m is the mass of our particle. Because we have an electron, the mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kilograms and we also need the quantity that represents h bar and that is equal to 1.055 times 10 to negative 34 joules multiplied by second so we plug in those values into this equation and we get that the wavelength of our plane wave produced by the free particle is equal to 3.89 times 10 to negative 10 meters. So this is the distance between any two consecutive crests of our sinusoidal plane wave. Now, let's move on to part B. In part B, we want to determine the wave function that represents the plane wave produced by our free particle. So we're assuming B, our constant, that appears in the wave function equation is equal to zero. So in the previous lecture, we basically said that the equation for the wave function of, of our plane wave is given by this formula, where A and B are two constants, and K is given by equations 1 or equations 2, and X is our variable. So basically, we know that B is equal to 0, so the second term cancels out, and A is simply an unknown constant that we cannot solve. So we're going to leave that as it is. But we can solve for k. So we can use equation 1 to solve for k. k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, where lambda is this quantity. So we plug that in and we see that k is equal to about 1.62 times 10 to the positive 10. So now we can take this equation and rewrite it in the following form. So the equation that represents the wave function of the free particle is equal to A multiplied by sine of 1.62 times 10 to the 10 of x, where x is simply our position along the x-axis. So if we can, I mean if we want to, we can actually plot this on the x-y-axis, where the x-axis is simply our position of the free particle along the horizontal axis, 
and the y-axis represents our psi of x. It represents our wave function. So it looks something like this. And the distance between any two consecutive crests, the distance between, say, this crest and this crest of our plane wave produced by the free particle is given by 3.89 times 10 to negative 10 meters.